And this is the one with uh, uh, the one with uh, outer outer sheet uh, with long term, about three months, uh, three months treatment. Uh, first shoot uh, we collected, and you can see they bring through the vascular panel and over the time put it translocate into a mesophyll. So they bring it and bring put it into another. Thing. And that's get, get, get concentrated, yeah? So now you can see these things, your eye. This is a nice thing about bio, elemental bioimaging, and you can see now it's in the, and it's, it's dosed quite a lot. You know, at this kind of spot, 200 to 500 gold there, and nanoparticles here. Now, a lot of these people question these things, are, are they gold nanoparticles, so AU3 plus science, and we have done an, you know, that small paper uh, the paper, we know they, they won't dissolve. Very little solubility, if you can look at it, these particles. Uh, very low solubility, and gold has a very low solubility. Um, so, you can see they are clearly, they are absorbing. Um, now, uh, I'm going to summarize what we have talking uh, now. Uh, you have uh, analytical advancements, uh, these are ability to detect gold nanoparticles absorbed by plant tissue using LAICPM is demonstrated. Uh, also, we were able to do spatial bio, elemental bioimaging. Uh, carbon 13 looks like a very good internal standard for many of our uh, biological work. And the method can detect as low as, well, this is the one that we had the lowest concentration, 1.6 milligrams per liter. Uh, gold nanoparticle concentrations where you have this much of gold, and then also it has a very high signal to noise ratio. Uh, and sample throughput is 15 samples, if you are all good. <laughs> all good, you know. Um, you, can, you can chunk out a lot of samples once you know the system. Uh, you can put it into that drawer, about 15 samples, and start tabulating, yeah? Uh, and, and then, uh, the analytical advancement, and then we have uh, big picture advancements, I think. Uh, gold nanoparticles clearly enters into the rice, you saw that. Um, they are not distributed homogeneously, pretty heterogeneously. Uh, extent of uptake seems to depend on the surface charge. It depends on the positive, negative charge on that clearly. And uh, this is very common for many things. And also, uh, but if you are using this get on article, you have to put a, a charge particle to go wherever you want to. Yeah, that's important for delivery purposes, yeah. And also, um, short term, that's a 14 day or seven days experiment uh, 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 determined by LAICPM is this order, AUNP1 is the highest absorb and the least absorb is uh, uh, AUNP3, negatively charged. But, but this order get reversed uh, when you expose these things into long time. We don't know why, yeah? <laughs> yeah we don't know why. And, but anyway, we demonstrated that, um, yeah, that's, it's come nervously different. Both shoots and roots uh, concentration are significantly higher in long-term treated rice plants. You saw that in the bio image. And it appears the AUNP at certain threshold, uh, AUNP has concentrated in mesophyll, at certain threshold, it's go into the mesophyll, and you have the drain that bring, and then some of these things get going into the next layer, and they get deposited. You saw that one, imaging one, yeah? And then, uh, then uh, that's all, <laughs> so. And then I would like to thank uh, for several folks uh, who funded. Um, this is, uh, we, um, we got the laser ablation system from NSF MRI R2 grant uh, for giving us this, uh, this new laser. And then also for my, most of my students are, they have all summer work is funded by Pitcon. Uh, they are very gracious to me over the years. 
and also um, Jeremy Cornell and Tom Lennon who graduated uh, now uh, and they did their um, uh, work uh, on these things quite a lot of work and uh, then Wahu Wang Wang um, did a lot of hydroponic experiments uh, and then uh, Vincent Ro uh, Richard Washe and Vincent Rotello uh, chemistry department sup supply this synthesized gold and particle. They are the guys who make these things and they have published a lot of things about these gold nanoparticles. Uh, and then also uh, our laboratory technician uh, Christine Shrout for this work. And um, once again, uh, thank you very much. I enjoy uh, and continue to enjoy in San Carlos. And, uh, thank you very much for inviting. And I'm looking forward for afternoon. Uh, that will be very, very informal, but I will show you lots of, lots of uh, other application of bioimaging, uh, many examples including Chilean mummies and uh, Antarctic lichens and so forth. Uh, so, uh, and thank you very much and uh, if you have questions, please uh, go ahead, yeah. Do you use for standards? Yeah. Use some laws. And is it possible to use also the Google files? Do we use that? No. Yes. No. Why not use the control rise? Control rise. <laughs> yes. This is the thing, one of those reviewers. This paper is now in January, you know, issue of uh, this work in uh, environmental pollution. One of the reviewers asking you can use rice control one. Well, you know, that's a possibility. We have used similar ones uh, with chili and mummy's hair, so, you know using real hair samples. But we took this approach, you know, uh, initially and then, yeah. But that's a good, that's a possibility if you have uh, char well characterized uh, sheets of, uh, you know, you grow them, right, to control and then series of exposures and then you find out normal traditional way how much is there. You can use that approach, yeah. But uh, the, when we start this work, we didn't know whether these guys are going in or not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The hamster experiment. Yeah. How many points do you obtain samples? You mean the bioimage? Ah, that's about um, 300 to 300 block there. So that's uh, there are about 300. So 50 uh, 50 micrometer. Uh, Circle, right, spot size. That's about 10, 10 by 10. Oh, very small, small time, yeah. Yeah. That's about, no, not 10 by 10, it's about 6 by 6, yeah. You can go to a very small size, even go to 25 and 10, uh, thick, uh, the signal, signal decreases. You know, we are doing right now uh, with whole, mm. whole rice seeds. You know, it's a different project, N nothing to do with gold nanoparticle. Whole rice seed is takes my students starting calibrating in the five o'clock in the morning <laughs> and finish at 11.50 <laughs> in the night. Yeah, those are very thin. You have to be there, you know, when you start this thing, you, you never know. Light, small light goes up, down, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, th those are very high resolution imaging now, right now. Yeah, I, I tell to my students, you know, it's just like going across the country, starting from New England and, all, you know, go cross country several times and end up in <laughs> Miami. You know what I mean? Many times, yeah. So they know they have to bring s sandwiches and everything is prepared. <laughs> Even myself, you know, kind of uh, tense because you know, so many things can go on the middle of the run, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. <laughs> because you know, you don't think it's true. When you do experiment, your professors always think about this, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> If you notice any difference between the plant size growth in the, the nanoprobe, in the particle, and the controls, you 
notice any difference? You mean the second half No. No. Talking about the plants. Yeah. Notice any difference uh, between of, between the control and the plants grown uh, with the uh, golden part. There's a difference, yeah. But about the size and the colors and the uh, uh, you mean the visual colors? like kind of a off color you know um, whitish off color both you can't see you know visually gold there yeah but the, uh, we, um, it can absorb certain times depending on the pore size of this uh, outer cell in the surface too yeah we don't know those mechanisms you know we do know these are doing the mechanism Probably they are sometimes they are binding, there are uh, apoplastic and uh, other one is, uh, so apoplast is going through the cell, you know, going through the cell wall and symplastic. So, there are two mechanisms these things move in cell wall, cell to cell, yeah, you know, in the bottom, yeah. We do not know these mechanisms, physiological mechanisms. You know, it's the, it's the, this uh, science is at infancy, yeah. We know now it's going in, yeah. It's interesting to see that, yeah. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the, everybody knows how these things are translated. Okay, botanists know that, how they translate metal ions, metal ions, like, so they're well known. But this particles, we don't know. Hold on. <laughs> Did I answer that, your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it, yes. We want to follow because zinc is well known, you know, nutrient and see whether zinc follows the uh, gold follows the zinc, yeah. We can see initial experiments they follow very, very good, yeah. Uh, but we did not follow um, very closely this aspects, you know. You know, because um, zinc is very known to the botany physiological community, you know, and it's a major nutrient because it, it you saw that side, it follows very similar gold, but we didn't look at it move very closely, you know, by the imaging wise, yeah. Yeah, when you put another element, it take a while, at, at, a, at another time to do the analysis, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the beginning, you know, you were, okay, let's get this gold stuff, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Usually it takes, uh, you know, these things take about two, three hours to do that, but uh, but the seeds, uh, we are doing a hell of a lot of time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's good to look at it, yeah.